G'day everyone and welcome back to another David Maxwell Golf video where today, inspired by my last video, I have got some RCT balls and the first test that I want to do is I want to test it with the Garmin R10. I want to see if the Garmin R10 actually reacts differently or gives different numbers using the RCT ball compared to my normal Callaway Chromesoft XLS and is it beneficial for us to go out and actually buy these RCT balls as Garmin R10 users. Now, these are expensive. They're $36 Australian a sleeve or $95 for a full box. I've tested it with three. Well, I'm going to test it with three because that's pretty expensive when you do go through these balls pretty quickly, hitting a lot of balls into the simulator. So let's jump into the 24 seven golf simulator. If you haven't already checked them out, I'm gonna link it below in the description. I'll also pin it in the comments. Make sure you check them out because these simulators are awesome. Make sure you also like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff, any questions, I'll get back to you in the comments. Let's do it. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go gap wedge, seven iron, four iron, just the standard. Hit three or four shots with each. If I hit three good shots, I'll move on to the next club. Let's go. Didn't really get that one actually. Got that pushy, kind of cut under it a bit. Need to get these uh, hips moving. 98, my actual distances with the gap wedge is about 105. better. So we're going to go through, we're going to hit three or four shots with each and then we'll check the numbers out at the end. One thing that's going to be really interesting is the lateral dispersion, the spin and also the ball speeds. That was good. Okay, so we've got three decent ones there. Let's jump into the RCT ball and see how that goes. This is by far the most expensive ball that I've ever hit, $12 each for a single ball. That's up there. All right, let's go. RCT ball. It didn't pick it up. Oh no. Don't, don't do that to me. Let's just hope that that was something going on. Let's hit it again. So I did pick that one. 155 meters. This could be a disaster. I did not expect that. Okay, let's go again. Sorry if I'm in the dark, by the way, I'm trying to make sure that the screen has the best light. It's not picking it up at all. Let me open the garage, I'll see if I can get some more light, see if that's gonna help it here. But the Garmin actually isn't picking up the RCT ball at all. Okay. Let's see how this goes. I've opened the garage to see if letting in a little bit more light helps. Let's go. I can't believe it. It's actually not picking it up. I'm baffled. Let's go back to the Callaway, make sure it's not, something's not going wrong, but picks up almost golf balls and doesn't pick up the RCT ball. Picks it up straight away. That was the standard Callaway ball again, but it cannot pick up the RCT ball. So this could be a very expensive disaster if this doesn't work at all. I'm actually very happy that I didn't buy the full box right about now. Let's try the seven iron. Doesn't work with the gap wedge at all. Let's just jump straight into the seven iron, see if it works. All right, so we've got the RCT ball, the seven iron. Maybe I'll move these balls out of the way. I don't know, I'm just trying everything. Don't think that would have been the problem, but let's give this a go with a seven iron. I've hit that so good. It's not, it can't pick it up. I'm, I'm absolutely dumbfounded. I'm just gonna go back, this is a Callaway again. 
and this could be the shortest test of all time for me. So, well, I'll just hit it on the same thing. So this is a Callaway ball. Yep. The Garmin R10 cannot pick up the Titleist RCT balls. That was a beautiful shot, by the way. Last attempt with the RCT ball. Let's try it again. And then I'll try a gap wedge, see, a uh, uh, 60 degree. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing at all. Not a Jerry's cracker. That's disappointing. All right, guys, I've got to be honest, I'm slightly shocked and stunned. That was not at all how I planned this video to go. This is, um, this is a disaster, really. In fact, this, that might be the title of this video. This is a disaster. I've got a lob wedge. Let me try this and see if it works. Just trying some easy lob wedges to see if it picks it up. I, I'm not, I've given up on doing the comparison now because I thought I had it all set up and ready. I thought that we'd be able to do the comparison and we're not because it can't pick it up. No, nah, it's got nothing. Wow. Hmm. So I just spent 36 bucks for no reason. Awesome. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna jump into the Flightscope Mevo and see if it works there. Guys, so this is gonna be really interesting. I've now got the Flightscope Mevo set up and you have to see the alignment on that, but basically, it's gonna be interesting to see if this picks it up. All right, I got a gap wedge. Oh no, that's a lob wedge. Now I got a gap wedge. There you go, that's picked it up. All right, now we're talking. So 99 meters of carry there. So the RCT balls definitely work. In the Mevo Plus, they definitely don't work in the Garmin R10. So we only have hit one though, so let's just hit a couple more. Yeah. Definitely work here. We've got 98 meters of carry, 9,474 spin, and that's basically a perfect gap wedge for me. We'll go one more and then we'll jump into some seven irons and see if they work with the seven irons. Okay, that's basically a straight ball, 96 meters of carry, 10,000 spin. So this is actually really good for me to test this now because what I was going to do in the video uh, was to use the RCT balls with the Garmin R10 and the Flightscape Mevo to really compare accurate data with accurate data. You can't do it. So I'm gonna try that next with the metal dot and that'll be the next video now. All right, let's go. Seven iron. I pulled that hard and it definitely reflected that. Carry 167, spin 5.6 with a massive pull. That was better. That was beautiful. 169 meters of carry, 94 club speed, 130 mile per hour ball speed, 5,490 spin. I'd say I pretty much see identical numbers on the Garmin R10 as well, to be honest with you, but let's just hit one more. 167 meters of carry, a little bit of a pull again. Ball speed went down 124, I didn't quite get that one. 4,500 spin. Let's see if we can play a cut with this ball. I'm just, I realize I've kind of gone off topic a little bit here, but you know, we kind of got sidewinded as well. Let's try and hit a bit of a fade with the RCT ball. Yeah, that's fading. I mean, I pulled it, but it's still a fade. It's a pull fade. 163 carry. Do one more. That's a beautiful fade. That's about as fadey as my fades get, dead straight, but that's a fade. 
Maybe we can try a rope draw. Let's try one of those rope slinging draws. That's nice. Beautiful. Always get more distance with a draw. That's 176 carry. That's the best shot that I've hit by far. 132.6 ball speed, 5,000 spin. So, a little bit off topic, I know at the end there. Encouraging signs that the Flight Scope Mevo Plus, we're getting some accurate numbers. We're not having the italics in there anymore, which means that when I go to compare these two, if I get the metal dot, hopefully I can compare them side by side with as accurate data as they can both possibly give. So, be sure to watch that. That's going to be part two of my comparison with the Flight Scope Mevo Plus and the Garmin R10. In this side, the Garmin R10 actually really loses out. The RCT balls don't work with it at all. Um, and unfortunately, it's a downside. But is it really a downside? Because if I hit a normal ball with the Garmin R10, I am kind of still hitting the same numbers. But it is what it is. Thanks, guys. Hope you like that. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. If you've got any questions, got any suggestions, throw them in the comments, and I'll get back to you. Cheers, guys.